In recent years, scientists have used advanced technologies like airborne radar to see how Greenland looks under its 3-kilometer deep ice sheet. They found that the world's largest island is hiding quite a few fascinating surprises. Here are the details. Live Science reports that recent scientific studies have found a number of fascinating phenomena hidden under the 3-kilometer deep ice sheet that covers Greenland. One of these hidden phenomena is a huge canyon that is almost as big as the Grand Canyon. Stretching for 740 kilometers, this hidden canyon is up to 10 kilometers wide and up to 800 meters deep in places. Another study found a massive plan in the middle of Greenland that lies below sea level. This strange depression is probably caused by the weight of the ice sheet and is surrounded by a ring of hidden mountain ranges. Scientists were also thrilled to find evidence of a huge ancient lake bed that is now filled with a treasure trove of sample-containing sediment that scientists would love to access one day. Researchers also found evidence of at least 60 small lakes deep below the ice. These are filled with crystal-clear water that melted off the ice above. Scientists also found data pointing to at least two large meteor craters under the ice, and when an old ice core sample was studied more closely, scientists found fossils of plants that lived a million years ago. This old ice core sample was rediscovered in a freezer in 2017, long after it was originally drilled out of the ice in 1966 when the U.S. attempted to build a nuclear missile base in Greenland during the Cold War. Live science reporter Stephanie Pappas writes that this Cold War ice core sample came from northwestern Greenland and the plants held within may have grown in a boreal forest. Such a forest could only grow in largely ice-free conditions, suggesting that parts of Greenland's ice sheet may be younger than researchers previously believed. Recently, the U.S. has been dealing with the effects of apocalyptic heat waves, but now it's Greenland's turn, with tracking website Polar Portal saying a melting event on Wednesday was the third largest single-day loss of ice in Greenland since 1950. Here's what you need to know. A massive melting event has affected Greenland's ice sheet during a heat wave that has brought temperatures more than twice as hot as seasonal averages, according to Danish researchers cited by Audrens France Press. Since Wednesday, the ice sheet has melted by close to 8 billion metric tons a day, twice its normal average rate during summer, according to tracking site Polar Portal website, which is run by Danish researchers. While this loss of volume was not as extreme as the largest single-day melting event in 2019, the researchers say the area over which melting took place is actually larger than two years ago. The amount of ice that melted on Wednesday alone was enough to cover the whole of Florida in two inches or five centimeters of water, and more than half of that mass will have flowed into the ocean, according to one climate scientist who spoke to Deutsche Welle. The Greenland ice sheet is the second largest mass of freshwater ice on the planet, according to Audrens France Press. It is made up of nearly 1.8 million square kilometers or 695,000 square miles of ice, second only to Antarctica. A study published in 2020 in the journal Nature stated that Greenland's ice is melting faster than at any point in the last 12,000 years, and a 2019 research paper in the journal Science Advances said that could add between 5 centimeters and 33 centimeters to global sea levels by the end of the century. The heat wave that caused the most recent burst of extreme melting is a result of a patch of high pressure sucking and holding warmer air from the further south over eastern Greenland, according to Marco Tedesco, a glacier expert at Columbia University who spoke to The Guardian. Linking these events to climate change, he added that although these atmospheric events have taken place in the past, they are now getting longer and more frequent. NASA explains that the levels of carbon dioxide in Earth's atmosphere have been increased through the burning of coal or oil, as well as the clearing of land for agriculture, industry, and other human activities. This makes the Earth's overall temperature higher, which in turn can cause sea level rise through the melting of ice like that in Greenland. Worse news still is that this process will perpetuate itself, Columbia's Tedesco told The Guardian. He explained that because the snow on top of these ice sheets operates like a protective blanket, once that is gone, you get locked into a cycle of faster and faster melting. It's amazing to see how vulnerable these huge giant areas of ice are, he told The Guardian. This is, in short, a bad story getting worse. According to the U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, global mean sea levels has risen in total between 8 and 9 inches, or between 21 and 24 centimeters, since 1880, with about a third of that coming in just the last two and a half decades.
The rate of sea level rise has more than doubled from 0.06 inches or 1.4 millimeters per year throughout most of the 20th century to 0.14 inches or 3.6 millimeters per year from 2006 to 2015, and this is mostly due to meltwater from glaciers and ice sheets, as well as thermal expansion of seawater as it warms. A team from NASA has previously calculated that Antarctic and Greenland ice sheets together lost 81 billion tons of ice per year in the 1990s, compared with 475 billion tons of ice per year in the 2010s. This is a six-fold increase. In total, Greenland and Antarctica have lost 6.4 trillion tons of ice since the 1990s. A number of different studies, including one published by the Danish Meteorological Institute, now say this places us at the high end of climate estimates for sea level rises. The action we need to take is clear, according to Tedesco. We need to get to net zero emissions, he told The Guardian, and we need to protect exposed populations along the coast. Keep watching to find out why the world's largest ice shelf breaking off Antarctica earlier this year wasn't caused by climate change and didn't cause sea levels to rise. A new study published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences of the U.S. claims that the massive Greenland ice sheet is on the brink of a major tipping point. The study's authors say enough ice to raise the global sea level by more than a meter is probably already doomed to melt from Greenland in the next few decades. Here are the details. The Guardian reports that a new study of the ice sheet heights and melting rates in Greenland's Jakobshan Basin shows that the Greenland ice sheet is on the brink of a major tipping point. Rising temperatures caused by the climate crisis have already seen trillions of tons of Greenland's ice pour into the ocean. Melting its ice sheet completely would eventually raise the global sea level by 7 meters. The prime suspect for this surge in melting in Greenland is a vicious circle in which melting lowers the height of the ice sheet, exposing it to the warmer air found at lower altitudes, which causes further melting. Study co-author Niklas Boers says the findings show destabilization of this ice sheet is underway and might already have passed the tipping point. Boers said the findings suggest there will be substantially increased melting in the near future. Ice equivalent to 1 to 2 meters of sea level rise was probably already doomed to melt, though this would take centuries, and melting the whole ice sheet would take a millennium. Scientists say any large-scale melting of the Greenland ice sheet would have long-term global consequences beyond rising sea levels. It could halt the Gulf Stream ocean current, with potential knock-on effects of the Amazon rainforest and tropical monsoons. Antarctica's doomsday glacier is melting because of climate change, but it's also being heated up from below. Here's what you need to know. Climate change isn't the only factor melting the Thwaites Glacier, according to a new study from the Earth Communications and Environment Journal. Rather, the Earth itself may also be warming the massive block of Antarctic ice, which is colloquially known as the Doomsday Glacier. According to the study, the crust beneath West Antarctica is between 10 to 15 miles or 17 to 25 kilometers thick, compared with around 25 miles or 40 kilometers in the east, and this means that substantially more heat from below can access the west than can access the east. The researchers found that a geothermal heat flow of up to 150 milliwatts per square meter can occur beneath Thwaites Glacier, according to the study's lead author. Ultimately, the temperature on the underside of the glacier is dependent on a number of factors, including whether the ground consists of compact, solid rock, or of meters of water-saturated sediment, according to one of the study's co-authors, Karsten Gohl. It was already known that hidden rivers of relatively warm seawater cutting across the glacier's underbelly, plus the effects of unmitigated climate change, which warms both the air and the ocean, had caused massive melting. However, Gohl, a geophysicist, says that in addition to these factors, large amounts of geothermal heat can lead, among other things, to the bottom of the glacier bed no longer freezing completely or to a constant film of water forming on its surface. Both of these effects can ultimately result in the ice masses sliding more easily over the ground and into the ocean, causing rises in water levels. A press statement about the study notes that ice losses from the Thwaites Glacier are currently responsible for roughly 4% of the global sea level rise, but adds that this figure could increase since virtually no other ice stream in the Antarctic is changing as dramatically as the mass of Thwaites Glacier. The glacier gets its doomsday moniker from its massive size, almost as large as the UK, and the fear that if it melts, it will cause a chain reaction which collapses the other glaciers around it. According to Live Science, if the Thwaites Glacier collapsed entirely, global sea levels would initially rise by around 25 inches or 65 centimeters, but then without it, plugging the edge of the West Antarctic ice sheet like a cork in a bottle of wine, ice loss could accelerate throughout the region 
which would lead to unprecedented levels of sea level rise. These concerns mirror similar concerns about what is happening in Greenland right now, where just two weeks ago, a massive melting event affected the ice sheet during a heat wave that brought temperatures more than twice as hot as seasonal averages, according to Danish researchers cited by Ajans France Press. There, the amount of ice that melted on one day was enough to cover the whole of Florida in two inches, or five centimeters of water, and more than half of that mass will have flowed into the ocean, according to one climate scientist who spoke to Deutsche Welle. That melting event was caused by a patch of high pressure sucking and holding warmer air from the further south over eastern Greenland, according to Marco Tedesco, a glacier expert at Columbia University who spoke to The Guardian. However, he linked it more broadly to climate change, saying that although these atmospheric events have taken place in the past, they are now getting longer and more frequent. NASA explains that the levels of carbon dioxide in Earth's atmosphere have been increased through the burning of coal or oil, as well as the clearing of land for agriculture, industry, and other human activities. This makes the Earth's overall temperature higher, which in turn can cause sea level rise through the melting of ice like that in Greenland. The sum of all these factors acting on the world's ice is that, according to the U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, global mean sea level has risen in total between 8 and 9 inches, or between 21 and 24 centimeters, since 1880, with about a third of that coming in just the last two and a half decades. The rate of sea level rise has more than doubled from 0.06 inches or 1.4 millimeters per year throughout most of the 20th century to 0.14 inches or 3.6 millimeters per year from 2006 to 2015, and this is mostly due to meltwater from glaciers and ice sheets, as well as thermal expansion from seawater as it warms. A team from NASA has previously calculated that Antarctic and Greenland ice sheets together lost 81 billion tons of ice per year in the 1990s, compared with 400 175 billion tons of ice per year in the 2010s. This is a six-fold increase. In total, Greenland and Antarctica have lost 6.4 trillion tons of ice since the 1990s. A number of different studies, including one published by the Danish Meteorological Institute, now say this places us at the high end of climate estimates for sea level rises. The action we need to take is clear, according to Tedesco. We need to get to net zero emissions, he told The Guardian, and we need to protect exposed populations along the coast. That wouldn't save us from the wrath of geothermal energy rising up from below the Earth's surface, but in both Greenland and Antarctica, it would at least mitigate against the effects of climate change we've caused ourselves. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.